Hello and welcome to the Friday show. We've got a very special show today. We have a special guest, Elton Wellsby. He, he was a football presenter and commentator for over 20 years on Granada. If you're a younger viewer, you may know that now as ITV. So we're going to talk about Everton as he is an Everton fan. We're going to see what he thinks about their predicament at the moment. And we are going to ask him some questions about his career. And we're inviting you, the viewers, to ask him questions as well. Anything you've got to ask, he's willing to answer. He said there's no hold bars, his words exactly. And we will have a brief discussion at the end about what he thinks the game will go like on Sunday with Manchester United and his arch rivals, Liverpool. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching from. Are you ready? This is Let's Talk Football on Realist TV. Let's go. Elton, how are you, buddy? Good I'm to see very you. well, well, thank you. Yes. Nice to be with you. Right, we had... Um... A nice long discussion on a space on Twitter, didn't we, the other day? Yes. So, um, it was a very interesting conversation here in Elton's career, what he's done, some of the stories. So I couldn't help but invite him onto the show and let him give you guys an insight on what it's like. I mean, do you want to start by letting us know what it is you did, how you started, where you started? Well, I started um, in journalism at a, a paper called the Liverpool Weekly News. I was there for four years, and then I went to Radio City uh, at its conception, October the 21st, 1974. I will never forget that date, because I was at Radio City for four years, uh, had no inkling of broadcasting. Um, but, you know, obviously it went pretty well. Um, yeah. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then in 1978, or very late 77, uh, the, the, the head of sport at Granada Television rang me <clears throat> to say, you know, I want you to come and work at Granada for me. And it was a big decision because I loved my time at Radio City. As, as, you know, from, as an Evertonian, if you, if you know, you know, I was covering Liverpool week in, week out because they were so hugely successful under Bob Paisley, who became a great friend and mentor. What I know about football, I basically learned from Bob Paisley. Um, and then I went to Granada. I never saw a camera or a microphone for about six months uh, <laughs> because the boss was kind of teaching me the, the business and the way yeah. he wanted me to, to perform. Um, uh, and in fact, in, with it, in those six months, if someone had sort of said, right, you can go straight back to what you were doing at Radio City, I probably would have been would have said yes. Um, but it would have been a huge mistake because yeah. obviously, you know, as time progressed from uh, late 78, um, you know, I, I became uh, an established presenter. On, on television, which, which is kind of beyond my, my wildest dreams, really. But yeah. but that that that's how that's how basically it, it happened. Did you did you find it hard to adjust from being off screen, being on the radio, and then suddenly you're in the limelight, so to speak? Well, the funny thing was, I did two commentaries. Gerald Sinstad, who, who was. Um, like the, the cornerstone of Granada TV sport, um, I got uh, Bell's palsy, which means part of your face droops. Yeah, yeah. So and, it's kind um, of um, a minor stroke kind of symptom. It, yeah, it? but it, but it yeah. was all it was that his face dropped, so he couldn't. He, he was certainly off for a couple, like two, three weeks or something like that. Um, so I did two commentaries, football commentaries. Yeah. Um, one was Everton against Bristol City, 
where Andy King scored a hat trick. The other one was Man United against Arsenal, where Arsenal won at Old Trafford. Um, and I realised quite quickly that you you know you don't do continuous commentary as in radio. You know, yeah. you let the pictures do the talking, and then mm -hmm. add you know whatever research you've done or um, you know if interesting you interesting interesting points about players who've just been involved in is something so mm -hmm. um but gerald was the commentator and paul paul doc you know he wanted me to be a presenter he didn't want to he didn't want me to be a commentator i never asked him if, if he if he thought i wasn't very good as a commentator i don't know mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't believe he did because um, all, I suppose the reason he rang me in the first place was he was enjoying what I was doing at Radio City, which was commentating. That, that's that's all I did at Radio City, was commentate. And um, I, I, I hope I got it right when we were speaking about your career, because you was yeah. at Granada for so long, it obviously yeah. changed over to ITV. And that meant you was the first presenter on ITV, was it? Yeah, I, I never left Granada. Um, yeah. It was additional. I was appointed by the head of sports, ITV's head of sport, John Bromley, um, 1986, would it be, um, to front what, what they call it in the newspaper headline was Snatch of the Day, where, okay. you know, ITV had, had sort of, come in and said look we want to do live football on Sundays um, exclusively yeah. so that that sort of elbowed the beeb out and um, you know it, they weren't very happy about it but yeah we came we, we did um, we did live football right up until 1992 um, you know not every Sunday I think yeah. we. I think the first season we, we had a limited amount of maybe maybe twelve games or something. I can't remember precisely, but yeah. then of course it became every every Sunday. So it was great, but it meant I could still work at Granada on a Friday doing kickoff, um, and then on um, um, Saturdays I'd do the result service on, on ITV from London Weekend Television. And then Sunday uh, or Saturday evening, we, we, we'd head off to well, wherever we were going, you know. So a lot, a lot of travelling involved then. Got to see a lot of different places. Yeah, you, you, you know, funny enough, you don't, you don't see play, I, mean, I, I, I During my city time, I went to Barcelona in, um, in 1976. I never yeah. saw. I, I'm told it's a beautiful city. Um, <laughs> I never got the chance to see it. So, so you just basically I, you have know, to go do your job and go back again. Yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, yeah. Barcelona against Liverpool in the um, uh, in, in the European in the UEFA League, I think it was, um, and Liverpool won one nil through a John Tashok goal. Right. Um, but but it, we were in and out. <laughs> that was, we, we were literally in and out. So I right. never got to see the beauty of Barcelona. So you so was it this basically the same then for even in the UK? If you had to go to a, a different place, then you just did your job and you went back home or went back to base. Yeah, I mean that that was it. You, you know, you you'd, um, somehow you, you get to wherever you. I mean, it could be Newcastle, it could have been Southampton, you know, wherever yeah. on on the on the. We always went Saturday night, so we we were certainly prepared for Sunday afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's basically, and you know, all the transport was laid on. I mean, m money was absolutely no object to uh, ITV yeah. at that point. Um, but it, it, Enough, you know, it, it was very, very interesting. Well, um, Mick Ruby, who is the owner of this channel, 
has asked you a question, Elton. He said, Elton, yeah. we had sad news of the passing of John Motson. How well did you know John and what are your best memories of him? Well, because of the ITV BBC divide, we, we didn't meet on a week to week basis. What yeah. when we when we came across each other and used to have conversation, it was um, uh, European Championships, World Cups. I remember the the Euros in '88 in Germany, <clears throat> and Motti was commentating for the BBC, and uh, you know um, I, I was there because I, I was basically covering the Republic of Ireland, yeah. and. Um, the, the, the Republic of Ireland players, you know, at the intro, we, you know, where the, where the camera goes um, across the, yeah. all the lines of players and the, the national anthems are being played. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I said to Motti, I said, listen, I, <clears throat> I don't know whether you know this, but when it comes to the national anthems, the, the national anthem for, for the Republic of Ireland, they turn and face the flag. In other words, they turned right. their backs on the camera, and, and and he said, "Do they?" I said, "Yeah, they, they, I've seen every game they've played, and, and that's what they do." And he went, oh, "Thank you very much. I never knew that. This is I'm, I'm going to have to go by numbers." <laughs> and felt crazy. And sure enough, to John Watson's well, it would have been horror had I not. He warned him that yeah. as soon as the, the Irish anthem came up, all the players turned around, looking away from the cameras at, at the flag, which was flying on a grandstand um, at yeah. the, the other side of the pitch. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I, he, he would, yeah. you couldn't beat him on stats, but I came very close once. In fact, I did. No, I, in fact, I beat him. Um, we were in. <laughs> this was Italian ninety, and yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, the glory days of Syria. Oh, oh yeah. and yeah, and you know how well did England do in that tournament, uh, oh, which yeah. was absolutely thrilling because it was the first time um, that, that uh, a championship of that stature was presented from the ground. Yeah. And we didn't have studios. We, we were in the crowd, literally yeah, yeah. in the crowd, in the stands. Yes, but in, yeah, in, yeah. In the anyway, we we met Motti. Um, I, I forget which airport it was. I've got a funny feeling it was Palermo. Um, but uh, Graham Taylor had, had joined us then, who was the heir apparent to 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 Sir Bobby as England yeah. manager. So, you know, so the three of us, Graham Taylor and myself and Motti, were, were having a conversation and it came up, you know, we were talking about what, what Graham was going to do with the being in charge of the England regime. And yeah. he said, well, we, you know, we, we've got to do something about the under 21s. And um, which it was then. Um, and. Motti said, yeah, cause we, you know, we, it, no one ever comes through and then plays full international football. And I said, I thought Cyril Regis did. And, and Motti, in, in, in Motti's inimitable style, goes, do you know, I think you're right. <laughs> you're, you're right. You, you, I think you, you're right. Here <laughs> comes his briefcase to check the stat, and he said, yeah. you're right. He's the only one in the last, whatever, 20 years, 30 years, I don't know what it was, to come through and actually play um, a full in England international. Well, but so I th I'm thinking, wow, I've outstatted Motti. <laughs> I, I bet you never let him let, live that down either, did you? <laughs> uh, do you know what? It was never ever mentioned again. Was it never? Not? No. <laughs> no way. That's a quality one. That I hope you're happy with that one, Mick. Um, he, he, he's um, he, he was uh, he, you know an extraordinary man. I mean, he oh, lived yeah. and breathed football. That that 
that was it. It was like, it was almost like, oh, get a life, you know, outside of yeah, the I mean, get a life. But uh, I'm, his I'm wife, 30, I'm thirty four, so I basically grew up listening to him on. Oh, TV. I'm sure. So I mean, it, it's a it's a sad one. There's a there's a few as well that have either sadly well, passed Dick, or Dick, Dickie Davis, I thought. Dick, yeah. Dickie Davis went only a few days before Motti. I mean, yeah, you know, um, two two people who power hour. Sorry, football power. I was commented saying happy Friday, Elton. Um, thank, thank you, thank you guys for this. We need to know our history more, which I have to agree with. I mean. You, you seem to get better stories from back then as well. Everything's too set and organised now. Things don't go wrong as much and you don't get the, 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 the reason for that is we, you don't get the kind of access that we got. Well, certainly Radio City for four years and, to, um, and then from Garada right through to like 2000. Um Sorry, and until the, the the Premier League started in '92, the access to to, to the managers, the players, etc. Um, you know, you wouldn't see you know, the likes of Vinnie O'Connor stood outside Pinch Farm training ground because they wouldn't let him inside. You'd yeah. be in there. The manager would come out and said, "Do you want a cup of tea?" <laughs> you know, it was I mean, it did, was did, totally, did you totally able different. To... Did he used to be able to go in the dressing rooms as well? Oh, I'm a, yeah. Yeah. making that up. Yeah. If if you if you you, you had to request to go, into, you're talking about after the game. Uh, after or before? Well, nu numerous times. Um, not well, always because you didn't again. need you didn't need to. You know, you didn't need to. Yeah. I remember going into the 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 Liverpool dressing room at Wembley. In 1977, yes, when Man United had beaten Liverpool 1 0. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Man. Yeah. I went into the Liverpool <laughs> dressing room. And my, 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 my big mate in the Liverpool dressing room, Ray Clement, um, so I did an interview with him because, of course, they had the, 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 the European Cup final a few days later. And um, Ray gave a kind of a rallying call, not just doing an interview with me, but all of a sudden he spoke in a way that all the players could hear and hear what he was saying about this is just a, a minor upset. We will win the European Cup. And the likes of Joey Jones, who was so, so down in the mouth after the, the, the Cup final, um, you know, they 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 perked up as if to say, <laughs> do you know what, we can do this. Yeah. And of course, as history tells us, they did. They sure did. Um, Mick has just commented again to say that's an amazing story for us that grew up under Motti, remember him and you. For the young, it's educational, and I agree. Yeah, well, with, I with hope you say. That the younger viewers, there won't be too many younger viewers, will there? Because like my grandkids, they'll be all at school right now. Um, uh, yeah, but younger viewers at least 16 plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Well, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I've got I'm, I'm almost sporting the, the current Brian McClare look. Um, <laughs> I, I'm 71. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, and sometimes the memories, the mem you, you, you know, you, I, I struggle for dates. I can oh remember yeah, occasions. Yeah. I can, you know, I can remember occasions, but like, like I was saying, what, what year was it now? 1977. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. That, that's where it's... I think, I think I've focused on bit. so much trying to remember my son's date of birth. I actually forget how old he is. <laughs> you know, it's just, I just can't do it. Same with... Well, um, my... my very briefly, my son works in in Doha, Qatar. Oh yeah. Um, he he's the studio director of the Richard Keys Andy Gray show. All right. I know he was born on either August the sixth or August the eighth, 
uh, sorry, January the 6th or January the 8th. And do you know what? I can never... I, I'm hoping... You're rather, you're rather five months out or eight months out there. Yeah, no, uh, the, the August bit, that, that, was, that was a verbal slip. It was either January the 6th or January the 8th. And someone needs to tip me off. To, 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 oh, yeah. You know, which it is. I, mean, I never forget my birth, my, my daughter's birthday. It's September the 20th because my youngest grandson was born on the same day as his mother. Yeah, uh, yeah. Things like that, you don't, you don't forget. Yeah. Anyway, that, that's um, not talking football. With, with you working, do it, you was basically working on Liverpool, but you're an Everton fan. I mean, was was that not strange, or was was the passion still in it to do it for a club that's naturally a rival? It, it, it do you know what? You, you might not believe this. It wasn't strange at all, because I knew that where I wanted to go, and I had to be professional and put any bias to one side. And yes, I am an Evertonian. But I knew all the Liverpool team um, between 74 and 78. I, I knew them all personally. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't even have to ask for an interview. They just come up yeah. after the game, you know, and I think, no, I don't need you today. <laughs> but they, <laughs> we, we all got on ever so well. Um, wow. Well, so I, ba I, basically, with, with the professionalism, you've looked at, well, where do I want to go in my career? This is the opportunity I've got at the minute. That is that stepping stone. So I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to report yeah. on a team. And, I'm not really a fan of. I, I like them as individuals so much. Of course, I wanted them to do well. There was um, yeah. th there was a commentary I did for Radio City in 77, uh, Liverpool against St Etienne. And it looked for all the world that Liverpool were going to go out. And... Um, uh, it got to the stage where they were out on away goal on the away goal rule, which is now sadly yeah. defunct. I was um, just talking about that the other day, Elton. They, they shouldn't have scrapped that. No, that no. got a lot more excitement for me. Though. Spoil it. Spoil it. Um, yeah. Anyway, there's, there was a long one. My commentary went along along the lines of Liverpool are playing too many long balls, too many hopeful balls, and here's another yeah. one. Oh, it's David Fairclough. Fairclough, you know, and then I erupted, as did the entire ground. Um, and that goal, as I was only saying to David, not, oh, 10 days ago, um, yeah. you know, that, that goal uh, launched my career properly. Um, David sadly has had a, a, a minor, minor stroke. Um, but we're still in touch to this day. Um, along with our great friend Stan Boardman, who <laughs> you will probably have heard of. Um, yeah, and, and that that goal was was that goal. Was, I think the 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 head of Granada Sport, Paul, who I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. I think he heard that, and he heard that you know the passion I had for, for the game, and also for Liverpool. Yeah, you know because I've been with them throughout that campaign and and for the previous three years. So they were friends of mine. So I'm supporting my friends, not yeah, not the not club. Not, not a club as such. You know, yeah. So speaking of supporting clubs, I mean Everton fan, what what's gone wrong this season, Elton? I mean you're what eighteenth now, twenty one points. Uh, yeah, we're in the relegation zone. We are a total yeah. shambles. The board is being uh, run by a bunch of amateurs who don't know football, um, and that's the problem. Everyone goes, oh, Mashiri, this Mashiri, that. I I don't. Entirely blame Mashiri because at least he has signed off half a billion pounds, you know, yes. uh, for players. It, but the recruitment has been woeful. Um, 
Do you refer to recruitment as just players or managerial recruitment as well? A little bit of both. Uh, managerial um, appointments, um, Ronald Koeman was, 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 was awful. He never bought into the culture of the yeah. club. Ancelotti, well, how do you say no to Carlo Ancelotti? I mean, and there's, then, there's two high you know, profile in, managers there, Coleman oh, and Ancelotti. Yeah, but in Ancelotti, you know, when Madrid come calling and he, yeah. you know, to coach world class players, I've always said that Ancelotti was out of his depth in the shallow end at Everton mm -hmm. because we didn't have um, quality <laughs> of players. Um, so, you know, when Madrid come calling for, um, for him, the, you could have, I didn't blame him for going. I didn't blame him yeah, for it's going. Inevitable. You, you can't stop Rafa, that, can you? To a point, Rafa Benitez was a car crash. That, that was yeah. just ridiculous. And that was, that was, that was down to Mishiri and his mate, this, this foreign agent or whatever he is. I mean, um, Everton fans were Bill never going to accept a Liverpool manager, really, were they? Sorry? And Everton fans were never going to accept a Liverpool manager, oh, really, were no, they? Well, not strictly true. You know, once you become the Everton manager, then you have the backing of um, the entire Everton fan base. As long as you get that it right. It too long. As long as you get it right. right. Yeah. And, yeah. I did an article Who's... for the Liverpool Echo in, in November, um, which, which went a long way to getting him sacked. Uh, so you sacked him. <laughs> you put the final <laughs> nail in the coffin. Well, I, I I wouldn't mind taking the credit, I have to say, I mean, but it, it didn't help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was a disaster. Do you think... Who do you think has been the most successful after Moyes? I, I, I'm thinking off the top of my head, I'd probably go with Roberto Martinez. I mean, Martinez started off very well, um, but he, he didn't seem to have a defensive coach or he didn't seem to have too much uh, knowledge of defensive tactics. Um, mm. If you want to say the, the most successful, I, I, I mean... Uh, and not a lot of Evertonians will, will agree with me, but, but I would say Sam Allardyce because he was brought in to keep us in the Premier League, and he did that. Big Sam uh, problem was w once he'd succeeded in doing that, he didn't change the style of play, which which wasn't the, the Everton way. Yeah. Um, I mean, but to be honest, the big got Sam, Sam job. No, I I say, the big <laughs> Sam w was successful. Because yeah. he, he, he did what he was brought in to do. Yeah, for the targets that you required there and then. He was. Yeah. It he was, was no, no. In achieving that. It, the, only, the only thing he, he, was, he was asked to do in the, in the, the short term was keep Everton in, in the Premier League. And he so did. Do you think, do you, obviously, you, you seem to have gone down that route again, the big Sam route with Sean Dyche. Do you. Do you think Sean Dyche would be a manager that would change his style once you've secured relegation? Well, Sean Dyche, Sean Dyche is a manager I respect enormously. And I wanted him before we got Ancelotti. But of course, when someone says, oh, well, we're getting Car Carlo Ancelotti, you go, oh, OK, hold my hands up. You yeah. seem to have spent it. You yeah, okay. do that, yeah. And, and I wanted him um, after Rafa. And uh, I, eventually I got him. <laughs> figuratively I was, speaking I was asking because I've I've always thought that if Sean Dyche had money and wasn't managing Burnley I actually do believe he would be a different style of manager oh, without you, did start, you did start seeing a change with Burnley in the last season, season right. and a half still here. I have to, I have you, to you move saw the, just been... you saw the it's okay <laughs> no, no, I've just been told my my phone is about to die. So, well, bloody can, right. No, no, I can sort that out. Right, we're away. Um, yeah. Different uh, But yeah, 
I've, I've always thought he would be able to be a different manager away from Burnley and with some more money because in the last 12 to 18 months at Burnley, that ball was on the floor a hell of a lot more because he had slightly more technical players. So do you believe that he wouldn't do a, um, a big Sam and he would try and change his style up given what yeah. Mashiri does back, back managers with money? So he could get the players he wants to do. Well, I, I'm, I, I think Mashiri might have run out of money. And also mm-hmm. you've got a, um, Ushmanov has put more in than people know. Um and he's going to want his money back at some point. I mean, in fairness to him, although apparently he's a very dislikable person, you know, you can't blame him because he's been ostracized because of the, the, the Russian Croatian war. Um, so, but, but, you know, he will undoubtedly want his, his money back or, or some of it. So I, I'm as, not as sure. Every we, we, does. Pardon me? As every businessman does. They want the money back. Well, exactly. That's yeah. why they're, that's why they're, they're they're billionaires because they're ruthless. Yeah, exactly. You, you don't get there without standing on a few people, do you? Yeah, oh, you certainly don't. You certainly so do you don't. think you will? Do you think you'll stay out of relegation? Then are you going to stay up? I mean, you've got is it Aston Villa on Saturday? Have you got? We've got Nottingham. Who have we got? We're, we're away to Notts Forest on Sunday. The early kickoff on Sunday. Let's have a look. Oh, no, we are. <laughs> so you've got Forest. Where, where are they in the league? They're around you, aren't they? So it's a must win. Well, it, it's 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 close to a must win. I, I hate you. You know, we're in very early March. So I, I don't. I, yeah, I wouldn't classify it as a must win. Yeah. It, it's it's almost a must not lose. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. All oh, right. I know. I know why I said Everton now. It's because it it's shown up the women's super league saying Everton and um, Villa. That's why I said Aston Villa. <laughs> yeah, not a good Forest. Um. So they're they're in thirteenth. You're four points behind them, and they've got a game in hand on you. I mean. Sean Dyche should be the man to keep you up, shouldn't he, really? You, you'd put your faith in him to do that. I think we've lost you there, Elton. You might, if you can hear, you might have to leave and click the link and just rejoin again. Alton is just gone. Um, I'll just see if I can get him back. Uh, sorry about that. I've just sent him a message now, so we'll just wait to see if he can come back on or not. Um, we was going to move on to Manchester United and Liverpool considering he's an Everton fan Liverpool his rival as much as ours and see what what he thinks the result will be on Sunday for us United fans um, if you want to get some score predictions in while we wait to see if Elton can reconnect please do that and while we wait I will have a look at some news, Manchester United news. We'll see if we can just throw a bit of this in while we're waiting. Um, I'll go through what Eric Ten Hag said in his press conference uh, ahead of the Liverpool game. Eric Ten Hag said, I think we are in a good direction with our philosophy, strategy and culture. And we have to keep getting progress. It's all about that. And... On Manchester City and Liverpool, it's always a pattern. It never goes constantly in a way up. It's always going to be like this, up and down. It's fluid. I think our mentality in general is very good. I think we have many leaders who set the mentality, who sets the standards, controls the standards, who correct if necessary. And 
regarding his infamous quote of eras come to an end regarding Liverpool and City, he's commented, nah, his words, nah, but no. Their eras are not over. We are still in this season. And on beating Liverpool at the start of the season, he said, it's in the process, but it's a couple of months back, so we're in a different process. It's a different period, so I don't look back. I look forward to Sunday. <laughs> and we do have Elton back. Yes. There we go. I'm terribly sorry about that. I hope that that's not ruined your programme. No, no, that's um, okay. I just read a bit of Eric Ten Hag's press conference instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I got you know, I, I had a loose connection on, on the phone because it, it's on yeah. charge at the moment. Right, okay. Now, where were we? Yeah, so base, basically, um, Daesh is the man to keep you up. And do you think he will succeed in that? You'd put your back on it, wouldn't I, you, for Daesh? I, I, I'm more hopeful um, or more optimistic <laughs> than pessimistic because he's done it with Bur- a fantastic record with Burnley. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they did go down early on in his tenure, but they came, he, he brought them straight back up again. Uh, but it was easier in those days because the championship has become so, so competitive now. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't, and with Everson moving to a new stadium, of course, Bramley Moor, um, we we can't really afford to, to be playing championship football at Bramley Moor. You know, we, we need to, you know, something needs to happen. I mean, my, the day. For the stadium. Me? When is the completion date for the stadium? Oh, it'll be 18 months. Something like that. Yeah, so it'll be in there for not next season, the one after you'll be moving in there then. And that That's the way it seems. Yeah. No one is 100% sure. We, you never uh, can be. We don't know Daniel. if Mashiri if if sells um sells the club then whoever yeah. buys it is going to have to take on the expenditure um for the bramley moor project yeah. what machinery mm-hmm. has already spent um you know however much it is to complete you know, it's yeah. you know people say that everton will be able to be bought for five hundred thousand pounds uh you know, Five hundred million, sorry, no chance. It, it will be a billion. It, it'll yeah. be a billion plus. It'll definitely be around that figure, won't it? I do. I just want to uh, come up on one thing before we move on to the Manchester United Liverpool game this Sunday. Anthony Gordon was he right to do what he did? Is your opinion as an Everton fan? And is it true that? He did have a bust up with Conor Calder, and that's maybe a reason why he left. Well, I wasn't in the dressing room, uh, but <clears throat> the, there was, I forgot which game it was now, um, where fans hounded him when he was in his yeah. car. Yeah. I don't think that helped his mindset at all. Um, yeah. But as far as I, I, I'm concerned, it would be nice to have him, but we needed the forty million that we got from yeah. Newcastle either to get past April the the eighth, you know, the end of the fiscal year. I think it's, well, it's about that time, yeah. um, and then we're 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 free from any embargoes that the the Premier League m- might might have on on us. So I think we needed the money. Um, and I think forty million was a very fair price to pay for, for Anthony Gordon. I I never I had him down. Not a good price. I, I I personally didn't have him down as a great player. I didn't see that myself either. I mean, I don't know whether Everton would have sold someone else if they could have got forty million, so they could keep Gordon because he might have developed. You know, he's got the, the, the only our, our squad is almost worthless 
the only ones who, who we could get money, serious money for at the moment, would be Anana. Um, yes. Although he, he's still a kid and he's he's adjusting yeah. to, to life in the Premier League. I think he's about twenty-one, uh, and, isn't he? And Pickford, you know, Jordan Pickford. Well, he's I mean, he's if, a signing he contract as well. Yes, he has, but there'll be yeah. a clause in that. <laughs> um. From what, from what I've seen, there isn't actually a clause, even though the rumours were going about, but I don't know how true that no, is. I, I don't know. I'm saying it, it's possible, probable. Um, yeah. I mean, if we go down, we might have to, it might be our our, our prerogative to to um, to say, you know, we want to sell you because we, we want to make money. We, we need money. Yeah. Everton at the moment is a fiasco. It, it's it, it's 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 awful. Um, Honestly, it's not quite the same for Liverpool, but their season's not far off a fiasco either, is it? For their standards, yeah. I mean, but we 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 I mean, we're Evertonians. We're used to moaning. I mean, if you if you look at Twitter from you know the, the Liverpool fans, it's yeah. they can't believe it. I mean, and some of them are seriously. Um, saying clock out. Now, oh, yeah. how how ridiculous is that? I mean, the man's won the Champions League. The, 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 you know, and, and so they're going through a little bit of a rough spell and need um, some some new blood. But to to start turning on the on the manager and what he's done is is to me is absolutely preposterous. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all down to lack, lack of investment in the midfield as you win games in the midfield and they didn't do that. They've had a lot of injuries there and they spent money on forwards yeah. instead. Yeah. So they did invest, but they invested in the wrong areas. I mean, yeah. do, you, do you think now United have got Casemiro and Liverpool's midfield still weak? Should United be winning that game on Sunday? I, I think United will win that game. Uh, I think Casemiro has been an ins inspirational signing. Um, yeah, he, he he looks a complete player. Um, as for Liverpool, they even though they they have won a couple in the last three, but but they I mean they beat Wolves two 0 they beat us two 0 um, but they look a bit disjointed. Disjointed. There's um, yeah. there's something there's something un Liverpool like um, uh, going on there, and, and I don't know what it is. I think, like I said, the lack the lack of midfield, oh, and then no. I don't think Van Dijk has been the same since his injury, and I think maybe teams are catching Van Dijk out now because Van Dijk used to be the one that had the pace to recover when the other centre back. Messed up. Yeah, he, he's played with Van Dijk as well. He's certainly not been the same player as he was before Jordan Pickford killed him. Yeah, I mean, he basically he nearly could have got a murder charge for that, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was certainly grievous bodily harm. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, <laughs> Henry's commented saying, "Brilliant video, now keep up the brilliant work." Come on, Manchester United, and. Because we are speaking about Manchester United, I'll just quickly ask you what score you think it will be on Sunday with United and Liverpool before I ask uh, something other United fans might love that you asked me to bring up. OK. Go for a score. Um, I would go 3-0 three, three, three to nine. United. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go 2-1 to United for that. Okay. I think Liverpool I think are starting you, to get a bit of confidence back, but I think we should still not do much, the job. Not much. I think United... I think Liverpool have got a, a bit of a soft centre at the moment. Um, yes. I, I think, you know, once United score, which I'm sure they will, um, that's when Liverpool could fold. Yeah. But, hey... You know, if I was right every time, I'd be living in the. I'd be speaking from the Bahamas, wouldn't I? You know, yeah, you'd be a very rich man. 
Yeah. Um, right, so Brian Clough, tell me about him, Elton. The most formidable um, manager of anybody in football was Brian Clough. He, he he was so intimidating, you know, he frightened the light out of you. He really would. But we, I did, I did one game with him. Uh, he was studio guest live. Uh, Derby against Tottenham, Tottenham at the base of the old base, baseball ground, yeah. and Cluffy was booked, and we promoted it because you know Brian Clough going back to Derby as a guest of ITV's blah 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 big deal. Um, yeah. forgot what time the kickoff was, but say about two or two hours before the kickoff, we got a phone call from his mate, um, who was a solicitor and used to drive him about and said oh, brian can't make it today he's not well now our executive producer trevor east an ex derby director as it happens um he he knew exactly what that meant it meant Cluffy was pissed so right. <laughs> yeah so it wasn't the only one then though was it a, a lot of managers players were all drunk back then <laughs> Not at that time. Um, anyway, so Trevor said to uh, Cluffy's mate, look, if he doesn't turn we promote this. If he doesn't turn up, you know, we will let it, we will let it be known. We will leak to the press as to why. Mm. So Cluffy and his mates, there was a minor panic. Anyway, Brian turned up about half an hour before the kickoff. And um, we had, I've forgotten who we had it as a as cover, just in case, you know, he didn't turn up. But anyway, he did. He turned up. So we sat in this makeshift studio overlooking the baseball ground. And, um, yeah, I got the usual, you know, sort of, hello, young man, you know, handshake. <laughs> Looking forward, looking forward to it, and we got closer yeah. to to uh, going on airtime. And he said, "You look nervous." And I, yeah, you know, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I'm not nervous. I'm a bit worried that I'm dealing with a guy who's an outspoken guy at any at any time, you know. Yeah, but what, what one who is pissed out of his head? That's that's a different <laughs> matter. So he's, he, and he said, this is about two minutes before once on air. He said, you know, you make me feel so young. <laughs> and then he went, it feels like spring is strong. Come on, join oh, in. So we're <laughs> singing, you know, we're, we're singing this song right up to the moment we went on air. I mean, <laughs> it, it, now then I was. You know, people say, what was the most nervy occasion that you've ever been involved in on live television? And that was certainly close. That was certainly wow. close. Because, I mean, once we got on, I opened up, you know, terrific. And then they had a, the cameras focused on, on the a badge on his jacket, which said the world's number one granddad. And then panned up, and you know, th there was Cluffy. Now that is on YouTube. That you you can any, anyone can can access that. Um, just wow. if you just go Elton Wellsby and Brian Club, that that comes up very mm -hmm. quickly because he, 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 he uh, but I never let him down. I did. I didn't. Um, you know, I, I didn't. Sort of say, well, you know, Brian is slightly inebriated here. Never, never let him yeah. down, and, and and if you like, protected him. Um, yeah. and at the end, he he sort of, sort of went out of the studio, got into his car. I come down just after him and was talking to the you know, Trevor East and Jeff Farmer, the late Jeff Farmer, um, about about the program and Cluffy's 
Mercedes was driving away, you know. And all of a sudden, it stopped and reversed back. And Cluffy got out. He came over, put his hand out, shake my hand, and said, thank you, young man. Because he knew I looked after him, yeah. Yeah, and you could have, what could have, a whole what could have been a, what, what could have been very embarrassing circumstances, believe me. Yeah. Can you imagine, it was, you know, that, that I think they still had the news of the world that day, but, you know, that, that kind of thing. You know, Clough drunk on TV. You know, <laughs> you could see that kind of headline if oh, yeah. I hadn't looked after him. And then, uh, I take it then there was no faux pas at all after the moment the song stopped and you went live. Everything went smooth. No, no, no. He was great. He was very controversial. In fact, he, he still made the back page headlines the following day because he said at one point, after Gary Lineker had scored the winning goal for Tottenham, um, he said, Peter Shilton, he shot it. He's not good enough anymore. This is the guy that helped him win two European Cups. So why he turned his venom on, on, on Schiltz, I've no idea. Um, but uh, but that was, they were the back page headlines the following day. Clough, yeah. Schiltz has shot it. You know, <laughs> so he's still, he still got his controversy in. Oh, now, yeah. oh, not to make the headlines. Yeah. Oh, good God, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, there was, we did a game at the city ground. Um, and once I'd, I'd finished, I'd wrapped up the program. I came down. I was talking to Cluffy's, uh, one of Cluffy's right-hand men, um, Ronnie Fenton. And Cluffy's office was about, I don't know, 25 yards away. And in those days, you didn't go into these press conferences. The press just gathered outside the manager's office, you know, and the manager came out. And, and Cluffy came out. I, I say I was talking to Ronnie Fenton, and, and Cluffy came out. And before he, he sort of um, engaged with the the gentlemen of the press, he looked down the corridor, me and Ronnie, and went, "Wellsby, shit house." <laughs> and, and Ronnie Fenton said, "Hey, he likes you." <laughs> that, that's the that's the kind of greeting you got from Cluffy if he liked you. <laughs> yeah, you, you got a bit of abuse, a bit of banter if he liked you. Oh, it, it, honestly, it would. I mean, I can't tell you the number. I really, genuinely can't tell you the number of times I worked with him. But um, you never oh, yeah. knew. You never knew what was going to happen. Yeah, you know, what yeah. he was going to say. You know, especially it's live. Part because, of the adrenaline as well, isn't it? Oh, the adrenaline is a wonderful thing. Um, it, it's marvelous. It sure is. I mean, I, I could I could come off a match, adrenaline still flowing, drink half a bottle of scotch. Of course, I'd be over the limit driving, but it didn't it, it didn't affect the adrenaline. Overrode the, the alcohol. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, this, this is coffee, by the way. Cold. Yeah, coffee. yeah. I'll, I'll believe you. <laughs> oh no, no. And it many were good. Have another drink for you. Uh, Elton, I shall let you go and get a fresh brew, a nice warm cup of coffee. We've been live nearly an hour now, and again, we we, we could talk for hours, Elton. I apologise for the delay, but I, I, no, it's fine. Listen, as I explained Don't to you worry. beforehand, I'm a technophobe, and I hadn't plugged me yeah. my charger in properly. <laughs> no, don't 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 you worry about that, buddy. I I could talk to you for hours. I really could. Um, we haven't touched, else in. We haven't touched the surface, believe me. Well, you're always free to come on another time and we can dig deeper Great. into all that old thing. I will speak to you later, myself as well, personally on Twitter. I'll send you a message because I've got to get a load of stuff sorted to pick up my kid, so I can't stay on in the background. So I'll leave it there with you. Your Twitter handle, Elton, if anyone wants to follow you, is Wellsby Elton, correct? Crikey, it's 
I think it's Wells beat Astelton, but it it doesn't matter. I, okay. I've got I've, I've got sufficient followers to to handle it all. I'll I'll tell you it is at well well uh, God at Wellsby Elton. It's at the bottom of the screen there. If anyone wants to give Elton a follow, send him no a tweet asking for some Every, stories. I, 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 re I reply on Twitter. I reply to all those who ask civil, polite questions. Um, that's, that's how it should those, be. Those, those, those who you know think I'm a shithead or a shit house, <laughs> as Brian Clough yeah. would say. I, I, it, it's water. It's water. It really is. It's water off a duck's back. When you climb oh, yeah. into to gantries in in like Stockport, Bury, Blackpool, Burnley, places mm -hmm. like that, that, the is insult where I'm from. That where? Is where I'm from, Bury. All right. Oh well, commiserations yeah. where your club's gone. But uh, well, I mean, United well, fan I'll... anyway, so it's fine. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it is sad to see. Very sad to see. Yeah, because I tell you what, Gig Lane, Gig Lane, um, used to many years ago before all, all sorts of things started occurring on football pitches. Gig Lane had uh, the best playing surface in the football league. Yeah, that, that's a fact. Did, didn't they take the grass from Wembley or something like that? I, I I don't know. I'm just I just know that every everyone said you know that Gig Lane finest playing surface um, in yeah. the country. Um, yeah, I'm sure they, I'm sure they I'm sure they took the turf from Wembley. Um, right, just one last question um, comment before we go, Elton. Yes, uh, sure. Yusuf, it's it will be poetic justice for United to go at Anfield and get a, I'm assuming that means a win and get a win, 100%. But we'll have to leave it there, buddy. We've all got things to do. You need a new, fresh, hot cup of coffee. Oh, yes. Fair play to you for getting through that cold cup <laughs> for all this time. Elton, thank you very much. We'll speak again, buddy. Take care. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks very much. See you later. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Release TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials. So that was the legend, Elton Wellsby. I hope you all enjoyed it. Some cracking stories, great insights. And as he said, there's a lot more to it. So we will have him on again. We will dig deeper. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for your comments. Like, subscribe, share the video. Let's let's get the video out there. Let's um, teach us youngsters and even those younger than me some of the fun stories that used to happen back in the day in football. Thank you very much, guys. Ciao.